Summary of the Custody of the Pumpkin by P. G. Wodehouse As the sun rises over Blanding's castle in the morning, the owner, Lord Emsworth, plays with his new telescope and uses it to watch his son, Freddy, who is holding hands with a strange young woman. Emsworth is crushed by this news, because he had hoped his son would one day meet a nice girl from a good family. After catching his son off guard on the deck, Freddy tells his son that she is Niagara Aggie Donaldson. She is from the United States and is a sort of cousin of Angus McAllister, who is the head gardener at the house. Also, he is going to marry her. Even more angered by these details, Lord Emsworth rushes to face McAllister himself. Emsworth tells the gardener that he will lose his job at the house if he doesn't send the girl away. McAllister quietly gives his notice after hearing this threat. Lord Emsworth, who doesn't usually think about how his actions will affect others, is happy with this result at first, but he soon realizes that without McAllister, who will care for Lord Emsworth's pumpkin? Lord Emsworth is very interested in the title pumpkin because it's the only vegetable his family hasn't won first place for at the Shrewsbury Agricultural Show. Emsworth feels very bad about this blot on his family's record, and when his winning veggie starts to wilt, he realizes how bad his mistake was. Emsworth sends McAllister a letter telling him to come back right away. The answer from McAllister is that he won't. Emsworth had never thought that McAllister might say no, so he is upset when he has to go to London, a city he dislikes, to find a replacement. Lord Emsworth's trip to the city, on the other hand, is both unpleasant and useless because he can't find a single person who meets his needs. On the third day of his trip, he runs into Freddy. Emsworth had told Freddy not to come to London because he was always getting into a lot of debt. In order to avoid a fight, Freddy quickly gave his father a note and left. The note says that he is now married to Aggie. Lord Emsworth is so shocked that he feels like he needs to be in nature. He calls a cab and asks to be taken to Kensington Gardens. When Emsworth gets to the park, the well-planned flowerbeds make him feel like a drug. The Lord goes into a trance-like state and thinks he's back at Blandings. Thinking he's there, he steps over the rails and starts picking flowers, which is a terrible crime. This obvious crime gets the attention of the parkkeeper, who is soon joined by a crowd of onlookers and a police officer. Emsworth says he is an earl, but everyone laughs at him because they think he is just a strange guy in a bad suit. Emsworth is saved from this trouble when McAllister and Mr. Donaldson show up. McAllister confirms that the Lord is who he says he is. People start to leave, and Mr. Donaldson says that he is Aggie's father. Even though Emsworth was worried that Aggie didn't come from a good family, it turns out that Aggie's father is a very rich industrialist. Not only that, but he thinks Freddy has a lot of promise and plans to put him to work in Long Island City. Emsworth is very happy about this, so he tells Donaldson to tell Frederick that his father wants him to be happy and that he doesn't need to hurry home. Emsworth then talks to McAllister and begs him to come back to the house. McAllister agrees, but only if Emsworth pays him twice as much. Sir Gregory Parslow Parslow, who is Emsworth's foe, congratulates the Lord at the Shrewsbury show while McAllister watches in silence. The pumpkin is sitting in one of the biggest shipping boxes that anyone in Shrewsbury has ever seen. On the note, it says, Pumpkins. First Prize About the Author Sir Pelham Grenville Wodehouse was born in Guildford, England, to a British judge who lived in Hong Kong. His mother took care of him until he was old enough to go to boarding school. He went to Dulwich College from the ages of 12 to 18. He thought those were the best years of his life, and the school had a big impact on his early works. Wodehouse wanted to go to Oxford for more schooling after he graduated, but his family's money problems kept him from doing so. Instead, he became a junior banker. During this time, Wodehouse wrote 80 pieces for nine magazines. When his first book, The Pot Hunters, came out in 1902, he quit his job to write full-time. From then on, he split his time between England and the United States and started writing plays. After a while, Wodehouse and his wife went to Le Touquet, France. When the Germans took over the town during World War II, Wodehouse was put in jail. 
After he was freed, he talked about being captured in a funny way on five German radio shows that were sent to the United States. Because he used enemy broadcasting tools, he was called a traitor and a Nazi propagandist in Britain. Wodehouse went to Long Island after the war and lived there for the rest of his life. In 1975, he was made a knight, and a month later, at the age of 93, he passed away. Wodehouse wrote more than 90 books, 40 plays, and 200 short stories over the course of his life. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.